Finally, something that enables you to grow four metal arms to slap puny spiders with. At least, that's what I imagine using Panasonic's new VR goggles is gonna be like. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. Seriously though, while their new VR goggles honestly look quite hideous, they promise some pretty cool features. Let's look at everything we know so far. Let's go. <laughs> Last year at CES, the world was still an okay place. And back then, Panasonic's surprisingly small uh, VR headset prototype garnered quite some attention for its weird looking, almost swimming goggles like looks. And this year they're back with another prototype which still looks quite weird but has some updated specs. Amongst others, the new and improved Panasonic VR goggles now sport Copen's uh, micro OLED technology which sport a per eye resolution of 2560 by 2560, which is a huge step up from the old 1920 by 2160 per eye resolution that it sported last year, and that at a astonishing 120 hertz nonetheless. Other important updates to this year's model is proper inside out tracking, as well as six dimensions of freedom when using the headset. The headset has no computing power of its own and requires a tethered connection via USB-C to a Android device or a computer. While last year's uh, model was criticized heavily, I'm told, for its weird weight distribution because of its like, glasses-like look, uh, this year's model has um, added some padding to the back to make it more stable on the head and making it sit more snug to your head. Also gone are the headphones which have been replaced with uh, speakers on the side of the frame of the headset. While this might all seem very awesome in theory, the cost of uh, using uh, mini OLED displays like this is still quite high, which in my opinion can mean one of two things. One, we will never see this thing see the light of day in its current configuration. Or two, this will be released uh, at a very high price, which then will probably not be supported for very long because of its small user base. No release date or price have been announced by Panasonic yet, but they claim that these VR goggles are actually aimed at both end users and professional use, like trainings and whatnot. A quick nice tidbit of information for us nearsighted plebs. The VR goggles allow for proper diopter uh, adjustments as well as IPD adjustments. Here's hoping they will not go the Quest 2 route of set stages of IPD adjustments and instead go for how the Quest used to do it, with uh, smooth adjustments of your IPD. So uh, a few questions that pop into my mind um, are how well is the inside out tracking gonna work? I'm also interested how the lack of internals is gonna reflect on the overall weight of this unit and how the new weight distribution is gonna affect comfort of wearing this thing for an extended period of time. Also, how is the visibility on such a small like uh, eyepiece? I'm curious, if you're gonna have any trouble with light bleeding through on the sides or anything. And also, um, something I haven't mentioned before is that those are uh, pancake optics, which means that the FOV of the lens is gonna be significantly lower than the FOV we're used to on, uh, for example, the Quest 2, which is around 100, I think, and is the whole experience gonna be less immersive? Um, we'll see uh, if this thing is ever released. So all in all, I think that even though uh, the chances of this, in my opinion, uh, ever hitting the market are actually quite low. Um, all of these developments just show that the market is growing uh, very rapidly, uh, which is a nice thing for us uh, end users. We're gonna get new technologies at a much lower price, hopefully at some point. The more big players are in the game of VR, uh, the better for us, I guess. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this headset. Uh, will we ever see it? Is it gonna be any good? Uh, yeah, as always, if you like the video, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you soon. Ciao.